There we go, there we go, folks. Okay, a little snow run today. It's snowing out, and uh, oh man, I tried to run up in the mountains yesterday. It did not work out, too much snow up there. So instead of going about 10 miles, I went five, and it just kind of threw the whole day off. But it's all about the big picture when it comes to training, right? And even, frankly, when it comes to live streaming. I was just thwarted left and right yesterday, but today, making better decisions as far as where to run, how to prepare for the live stream, all of these little steps. It's like those baby steps every single day makes the difference in our training, <laughs> in our training, in our lives, in our, in, our, in our progress with whatever we are trying to achieve. There's so many different ways to talk about that. So anyway, we're gonna get some miles in today and uh, just gonna cruise through the snow on the flatlands. We're not going up to the mountains, we're, you know, making a good, wise decision. All right, come on, let's go. I gotta wear a face mask. I gotta wear a face mask. This is not gonna, this is not gonna work. Right, there you have it whoo 15 miles 25k i'll talk to you about the pace back at the house uh, i'm gonna go in and lift right now but i will just say that uh the vimero 14s did just fine in the snow and the slush as far as i not my feet not getting wet like my feet are totally fine They're, i don't feel wet at all uh it's about 21 degrees out so it's not you know it's it's not uh, freezing, it's not like, you know, in the teens and tens, uh, but it's also not at 32, so the snow is, it's kind of that, it's not a real, it's, it's kind of borderline approaching really wet snow. Anyway, all I'm saying is the shoes did fine as far as like, if you're debating between getting the, the uh, Nike Shield shoes that are, you know, try to keep as much of the precipitation out. Uh, so anyway, and in fact, it looks like the sun is about to come out. All right, one last point is that, oh yeah, I'll talk about the Vimero 14s back at the house, but this is the week that I get to add strides back into my training. So I'm just gonna go nice and easy, especially since it's snowing out and it's cold. You don't wanna pull anything. You don't wanna hurt your IT band. So I'm actually just gonna go in the parking lot here. Uh, probably do three, just nice and easy, just beginning the very, very beginning of getting the turnover going just a teeny tiny bit. So again, this is just, this is the first strides of 2019 and I've been running now for, you know, over three weeks uh, straight. So again, just getting ready to get ready. All right. It is now about nine hours later from the last clip that you saw. I was at the gym. I didn't film in the gym. And, but I did run in the Vimero 14s. We're gonna talk about those in a minute. But the live stream worked, it worked. Upper right hand corner, go check it out. It was awesome, it was so fun, and it did not work last night, but we got it to work tonight, and now I, the countdown is on. I have six days to perfect the live streaming software and equipment to make sure we don't run into issues in the future. Okay, I'm gonna break down the computer, the other camera, and change the lighting around in here, and then we're gonna talk about the Vimero 14s, get you my full review. Mm. Oh, feels good to persevere, persevere. The Nike Vimero 14 made available to the public, I think it was November 29th, 2018, so about two months ago. And uh, okay, 15 miles today in this shoe, 24 kilometer, a little over 24 kilometers, 745 a mile or 445 per kilometer. So a solid good pace today, a little slower in the snow as you saw. Uh, okay, before I dive in, two points real quick. 
I have already mentioned this, you know, in the past, but I just got a, all the new subscribers, just so you know, I don't watch other YouTubers that are runners that do shoe reviews. I don't watch their videos about uh, running shoes before I give my full review of a shoe because I don't want their opinion to skew or impact my opinion. Now, once this vlog publishes tomorrow morning or today when you're watching it, I will then go back and watch the different guys out there and ladies who are reviewing these shoes. But does that make sense? I just don't want other people's opinions to impact mine. And second point, I would be very cautious if I were you, if you're watching running shoe reviews on YouTube, I'd be very cautious if the person does not mention how many miles they ran in the shoe before they're giving you the full review. Because I'm noticing at times from different YouTube channels that they're not communicating how much grit and grime and mileage and sweat and tears that they're putting into their shoes. For example, I feel very comfortable doing 50 miles in a shoe and then giving you my full review. Now, I cannot tell you the durability of a shoe after 50 miles, but I feel very comfortable that I understand the overall ride, feel, and general performance of a shoe after 50 miles. And I'll just say, I've got total respect for Kofuzi who does 100 miles before giving his thoughts on a shoe. But there's other channels, I won't mention them, that I'm like, wait a minute. Did you put more than 10 miles into that shoe? Or is this like the first or second run in the shoe and you're giving a full review? So just want to mention that. And I just checked on Strava. I have now officially put 62 miles in the Nike Vimero 14. So I feel confident now that I can talk to you about this shoe. With that said, this is what I communicated to you eh, six weeks ago after I got this shoe and my first run in the Nike Vimero 14. First impression out of the box you're going to get four to 500 miles out of this shoe. That was the first thought that hit my mind as I was pulling this shoe out of the box today. It's beefy. It's especially compared to the Pegasus 35. The shoe feels well built. You know when you like you pick up something and it's like engineered well? This shoe feels like it's got a lot of mileage built into it. So that was my first impression. And now, just to, get, just to refresh your memory, the stack height in this shoe, 27 millimeter in the heel, 17 millimeter in the forefoot. So pretty high, pretty high cushioned uh, through the midsole. That's a 10 millimeter drop. And for my shoe size, it's coming in at 10 ounces. So on the higher end, you know, a little heavier than, definitely heavier than the Peg 35 or the Zoom Fly Flyknit or uh, the Turbo for sure. So it's a heavier uh, shoe in the Nike lineup. Through the upper, it's an engineered mesh upper. Uh, I would say the breathability is not good and that's okay. Like I, I'm actually really enjoying this shoe in the winter months because it's keeping my toes nice and warm. And I would, like I said, you saw me in the snow today, keeping the snow out. Like it's a thicker upper uh, for the Nike lineup and it's not a shield. It's, you know, Nike has the Nike Pegasus 35 shield. Actually, many of their shoes now have this shield um, uh, protection through the upper, but the Vimero 14, I don't really know if you need the shield because the upper is such a tight, tightly spun or sewed or engineered uh, mesh through the upper. And then it has the fly wire for the lacing system. I love, I must say, Nike, good job on this fly wire. It really feels like you can lock your foot down really well through the upper. Remember though, I will say this, I remember making this comment after my first impression. I think the tongue, I know it's a small detail, but it's important. You don't want the tongue of the shoe moving around. The tongue on the Nike Vimero, for, Vimero 14 is too short. They need to extend it maybe a quarter of an inch to a half an inch. I, I like to tug on the tongue when I'm, when I'm locking down my foot just to get that right feel and so that would be one of my biggest critiques of this shoe actually is just just make that tongue a little taller it's it already weighs 10 ounces just add another uh it just add another uh 0.05 of an ounce half an ounce and make that tongue a little uh, a little taller through the midsole it's the react foam it's a very dense foam you know as you're pressing on the foam with your thumbs you know it's it's dense and that's good for durability um you know you can, and i'll just i'll just say it now I think you could get 
at least 400 miles out of a Nike Vimero 14. I'm telling you, this guy is built to be a workhorse. And that's a great thing for your dollars. Uh, but keep that in mind, like this midsole, it just, it's a lot of midsole going on. And through the outsole, lots of good rubber for good grip. Uh, I would even say the lug pattern is pretty solid. Like I would feel comfortable if I had to take these shoes on a dirt road or even on a, a, a buffed out trail. I wouldn't take it on a rocky trail. And in fact, I forgot my Solomon shoes a couple weeks ago at the house. I forgot to put them in the car. And so uh, this was the next best option sitting in my car, the Vimero 14. So I think I did, you know, seven, eight miles on the, some pretty tough trails in these shoes and they did fine. Lots, like a rock never poked through into my foot because that midsole, that react foam is so thick. And I would just say like the toughness of the rubber, like it feels like a good solid build for the rubber on the outsole. So no complaints on the outsole and it's a very uh, wide platform. So if you are a runner that sometimes can feel a little unstable when running, I would really look at this shoe. It's got a nice wide platform or landing area through, it's a wide shoe as far as through the outsole, like lots of good landing area. So uh, that would be something to consider if you sometimes feel a little unstable. And my final opinion on the Nike Vimero 14, I'm gonna give you the score right now, seven out of 10. It's a good score, but it's not a great score. I was more excited about this shoe uh, a month ago. And basically, I think it's just a little too much shoe for me. But I will say, if you have knee issues, if you're a, a bigger runner, like, a, you know, 170 pounds plus, like, the, for example, there's some weightlifters and bodybuilders out there that are watching these vlogs, I know you are, and have emailed me and said, listen, I'm a bodybuilder that is transitioning to a different, like, to a healthier living, and I want to trim up a little bit. I think this could be a great option. Like, this has great support. Um, I love the arch of the shoe. It's got a little bit of an arch through there to support your arch. And basically, like, the midsole is just money. Especially if you are, you know, if you're just a, a heavier pounder when you're landing. Or, or if you're running a lot on pavement or concrete. And you just want a shoe that will absorb some of that pounding and impact. This is, this is your shoe. This is the money, the game changer. But for me, I like to lean toward uh, a midfoot to forefoot striking. And I'm realizing that this shoe is, I'm leaning more toward a heel strike. And I don't like that. I like to do more midfoot to, to, to toe striking when I'm, depending on the speed that I'm going. So anyway, that, and will I use this shoe moving forward? Absolutely. I would use this shoe for like eight minute pace, for eight miles or 750 pace like I did today or 745 pace for 10 miles. I would not use this shoe for like a tempo run. I would not use this shoe for an easy day. Although you could, you could. Uh, but I would, for me, I would lean in the direction of the beacons. Love the beacons because they're a little lighter. And again, you're gonna be carrying around a little more weight uh, for the shoe. And I don't wanna be a Debbie Downer. I really think the build quality is there. It's a, it's a great shoe, but I don't know if it's a great shoe for me. And so, again, I'm not afraid to say it. I think if you are a stronger, bigger runner, and I know you're out there, like former football players, former lacrosse players, former, maybe you're like a, a, a road biker who has these like big, massive legs and you're trying to get into running, like this could be an option. Just like, boom, boom, big, strong ladies and gentlemen. So anyway, that's my thoughts on it. And I'm, I'm not, I'm going to keep running in it for sure. I just don't think I would use it for a long run, an easy day shoe, but just that kind of middle of the road, getting miles in, just getting miles in. All right. All right. Oh, and the keyword for the day, it's a number. You better believe it. The 14 down below. That is the keyword number 14. And the question of the day, I'm actually curious now because I thought this shoe would be more uh, in the running to be my long distance day shoe, my long run shoe in 2019. I'm leaning away from that now, but who knows? Maybe you can persuade me down in the comments. But the question of the day, what is going to be your 
long run shoe for 2019. Like what shoe are you going to wear to go run 15 miles, 18 miles, 20 miles, 22 miles, whatever your long run is. And if you're in high school, maybe it's 10 miles and that's fine. But like, anyway, I, I know that's a very niche question for if you have like three or four pairs of shoes. Uh, but that would be awesome if you could share your insights as to your long run shoe for 2019. Oh, love you guys. You're the best. Thanks for being here. Woo, what a day. We did the live stream again, upper right hand corner, if you want to go watch that. And that'd be amazing. I'd appreciate it. Woo, see beauty, work hard, and love each other. We got this. We got this. See you tomorrow.